I've done the introduction and welcome. We're just going to run through the story of the Innovation and Mindfulness Awards, just so you know a bit of background about why they've come around. Um, I'm going to run everybody through the process, so you have a bit more information on that. Menka will talk through the criteria in a bit more detail, so what we're looking for when it comes to um, the actual application itself. And then, as I said, we'll open it up to Q&As. Um, as I've said, the session will be recorded. Please use the chat. Um, we want the whole of this kind of process to be as supportive as possible for everybody. So what that means, and that starts now. So what that means, if there's anything we're doing during this Zoom session that's not particularly helpful for you, um, please do drop me a message privately in the chat. If you want me to go over something again, or you want anybody else to go over something again, or if things aren't being presented in a way that kind of works for you, and we'll do our best to adapt as we go. Um, as I said, the session will be recorded, so you'll have every opportunity to watch it again if you need to. Okay, but without further ado, I'm going to pass over to Menka. I'm going to give you a little bit of background on the story behind these awards. Thanks, Ruth, and hi, everyone. So my name is Menka Sangvi, and um, I am a researcher, facilitator, podcast host on themes about mindfulness and compassion in different contexts. My background is in social innovation and design. And um, for that reason, I was also the lead author of the field book, uh, which was published by the Mindfulness Initiative in 2019. And so um, just by way of background, why the field book? <laughs> the Mindfulness Initiative um, is one of those organizations that aims to be genuinely working across the whole sector and beyond it. And a few years ago, Jamie Bristow, who was the sole director at the time, he and others in the core team found that they were talking to a lot of people who were very passionate about mindfulness and coming up with exciting ideas about how to do things differently when it comes to mindfulness training. And this is when I was brought in as an innovation specialist to create a guidance document for this group. But as I started interviewing people, I also found that a lot of the leading mindfulness teachers and researchers were concerned about innovation too. They questioned whether innovation was necessary in many cases, whether or not the new ideas were actually better than the proven methods for training. And also when new platforms become very popular without an evidence base, there's always that risk of ineffectiveness and also potentially even harm. So through these conversations, we identified that in the sector, there's this problem that while these concerns are all fair and valid, they also create a, you know, um, being very frank with all of you here, it's like a, a status quo um, and a feeling of resistance for new players entering into the space. So in a way, the point of the field book was to bridge the wisdom of these two groups in offering encouragement and practical support for the innovator to address these concerns and to make the sector more effective, diverse, inclusive, and beneficial. And so when we published the field book, um, if I were to summarize the main message in it, it's that innovation can be hard and lonely work, especially in the early stages. So why not connect and collaborate with others, make use of knowledge and skills that already exist and get help in uh, testing your offering, having your offering challenged by diverse perspectives and making it as effective and successful as possible. So that's uh, just a little bit of a background on the field book, which is um, free to download on the Mindfulness Initiative website. Thank you, Menka. And then Vin, who is um, our, our pop from the Heart No Trust, Heart no Trust, who are our partners on this um, exciting project, is just going to give a little bit of background on why he sort of came up with the idea, really, of the Innovation Awards. So yeah, it's all thanks to Vin. Um, so over to you. <laughs> Hi everyone, Vin Harris. Um, I'd been a meditator for a long time before I started becoming involved with mindfulness. Um, I was involved in Sam Ling, the Tibetan Buddhist Center, and helped to build it, uh, which was quite an experience. And then I started off in a, a small business. Um, we were actually restore sash windows in historic buildings. But I meditated throughout the whole growth stages of that, becoming quite a successful business. And then latterly, I thought that it, as I came closer to retirement, I thought it would be really useful to share the benefits of meditation that I'd found 
in you know very practical life with as many people as possible so long story short i started i helped to start the mindfulness association when i was teaching for them and on the msc in aberdeen um, and then i read the the field book and it really resonated with me that there is i do feel there is a need for innovation and, and my business life has been about innovation throughout the whole process and the principles of entrepreneurship and innovation. And I would be towards the end of the spectrum saying that I do think we need to innovate, but also I really get it that we need to be careful how we do it so we don't do any harm. And we really don't bring the whole idea of mindfulness into disrepute. So I'm not quite sure where ideas come from, but uh, I had the idea to, oh, sorry, I forgot the missing bit was that then as a result of our business, we were in a position to start a charitable trust to sort of sponsor things that we find to be interesting and worthwhile. But in general, with the aim of empowering others and helping people to get some freedom in their lives so they can help others. So I contacted uh, Jamie and with my idea and it kind of started to fall into place and then other people from mindfulness initiative came on board and then we got Menka to come and what I think is take the next step in having done the field book which is ideas but how could we make, bring the community together and actually put that into practice and so we've spent a lot of time on this and it's so nice to eventually see people because when you do sort of invent something you wonder if you've been in an echo chamber so it's actually nice to see that people are responding to the idea. Um, and the key concept behind the awards, I think, was that through the criteria, which Menke is going to talk about later in detail, we felt there was an opportunity to guide the best practice of innovation and to encourage people to ask themselves key questions and also to put innovation on the map and to put mindfulness in maybe the next stage of its journey. So our, our trust decided that we would support this idea. And um, I've just had such a good time working with Menka and Ruth. Um, and now hopefully with some of you. That's me, thank you. Thanks very much, Finn. Um, I'm not gonna add too much to this because I want it to mainly be about questions and answers that you, questions that you guys have. Um, but yeah, just to reiterate that it's been an absolute pleasure working with um, Menka and Vin on this. Um, from the Mindfulness Initiative's perspective, for those of you that don't really know who we are, um, we founded ourselves in 2015 um, and we clocked the all party parliamentary group. So we were behind the uh, UK's first policy report on mindfulness, Mindful Nation UK, which looked at mindfulness across different sectors and really focused on the evidence base. And that was how we got policymakers' attention on what mindfulness is and how it could be helpful. But we've also kind of throughout our existence really supported the mindfulness sector more broadly. And so these innovation awards really sit within that framework because as Finn and Menka have both alluded to, we're really keen that we stay close to the evidence base because that's obviously the basis on which we can do a lot of our advocacy and campaigning, but we also want to encourage innovation and growth because that's also something that's helpful for our um, advocacy and campaigning. You know, if we just say sort of stay stale in, in our own little silos, then we wouldn't really get get very far and we feel as though we have a good position to do that as the mindfulness initiative because we're not associated with one particular training organization or individual so we felt as though we really could with the field work you know kind of cater a little bit to everybody and sort of bring people together under this big tent where we're all talking about ideas and innovation and what it can bring bring for people so yeah really excited about about these awards and kind of celebrating that because that's what that's what this is this is a celebration of innovation and you know what's being done and what's out there and what what we might not all know about um so i'm going to kind of move on from the background um and talk a little bit about the process just so people have have that and know where to go so in case you didn't um get a chance to look at the newsletter that we sent out last week because you might have found out about these awards through someone else um we've put all the information on our website so on the mindfulness initiative website there is a dedicated page which i will share with you now um, 
which basically has everything you should need to know <laughs> about these wards. But this is the first time we've run them. Um, so there's probably something missing that we haven't thought of. So if there is, please let us know because um, we'll then share it with everybody else. It won't just be you um, that, that notices it's missing, I'm sure. Um, if I just do a quick canter through the, the website for you, really, um, just going to talk you through some key dates that we've got. So key dates at the top, we've got the Q&A today, which you're all at, so that's great. Um, the deadline for submissions is the 16th of May, so Monday the 16th of May. So that's um, around five or six weeks from now, the big Easter break. Um, so I hope that gives people enough time to put together their submissions. Um, obviously, if you are really struggling, um, please let us know if you need any kind of um, adjustments making. We can definitely take those into consideration, but we're hoping that that does give everybody enough time. And then we're going to have a judges panel look at the submissions. Um, our process is that we're going to anonymise them. So we're going to separate out names from applications and have judges uh, run through them and come up with a, a short list of five. Um, and in July, we'll announce the finalists. And then in September, we're hoping to have an awards event. Um, COVID and pandemic pan uh, kind of subject to that. We're hoping to have it in person somewhere. <laughs> Otherwise, it will be online. Um, so that's the kind of rough timetable for you to be aware of, but the key date there really is the 16th of May. We talk a little bit more on here about the background to these awards. So what we've talked about, why mindfulness needs innovation, what the purpose of these awards is, um, who's behind the awards. So you can read a little bit more about us, about the Heart No Trust if you'd like to. And then we talk about who can apply. And as we said in the newsletter, um, this is, for this year only open to um, people in innovations based in the UK and that is partly because it's the first year we're running it and we're quite a small team so we want to kind of you know test this see how it goes and we're hoping to expand to other geographies in the future but it's just UK for the moment. Um, they're open to all but we're particularly encouraging people from underrepresented communities to apply or if innovation has positively impacted a community that's had less access than others to the benefits of mindfulness based programs because we're aware there are um, many communities that mindfulness isn't reaching or where work is being done but the mainstream mindfulness sector don't really know about it and um, so we're really keen to highlight and celebrate those. I'm going to skip over the criteria quite quickly because that's um Menka's going to go over that in more detail um, but we've got a little bit here and what happens if you win. Um, we're going to have one winner a runner-up and three outstanding nominees so the winner will get four thousand pounds to spend on the development of their project we're going to do a short film um celebrating what's exciting that hopefully they can use in their sort of promotion for their innovation and we'll obviously do what we can to kind of showcase you on our web page and in our newsletter you know really kind of give you a shout out um runner-up it's two thousand pounds short film again and showcasing um, and in all the cases, so there are going to be three outstanding nominees, you'll get um, feature on our website and newsletter and also constructive ideas and feedback from the judging panel to kind of help hopefully take, take your project forward, um, however you decide to. I'm just going to open up the um, application form so that you can kind of see that and I won't run through it in mind numbing detail, don't worry. Can everybody see the application form there? Yeah, cool. Okay, so we've done it in Word. Again, if you have, um, if you don't have Word and that causes you huge difficulty, please email us and I'm sure we can come up with some other alternative for you to submit your application. Um, at the top, we've just got some standard questions about personal inspiration, describe your innovation in a nutshell. What's your understanding of mindfulness? Because obviously we do want this to relate to mindfulness. <laughs> so those are kind of our key, key questions that we've had at the top. And then um, again, I'm going to skip through these mainly because um, Menka will go over them in more detail, but we've just got a question linking to each of the six criteria. Um, and underneath the question, we kind of expand on it a little bit in case you're thinking, well, what does this actually mean? Um, we really encourage you to, to answer these as if you're kind of talking to um, a friendly advisor. So, you know, they don't need to be really kind of formal in their content. Um, please don't attach any photos or PowerPoints or extra things. Just try and put everything that you can in the actual application form itself um, so that everybody's uh, on a level playing field as far as the application goes. Um, and then at the bottom, we just have the address, the email address for where I send it back to. Um, 
innovation awards at mindfulnessinitiative.org.uk. Again, that's kind of a separate email address so that things don't come into me, Benko or Vin, and you know, we're sort of trying to keep it separate so that we can then help with the initial sift of the applications. Um, and at the bottom there, we said, if you need any particular accommodations or assistance to apply, extra support with filling out the application, please do get in touch and let us know. Um, we're a small team, but we definitely want to kind of offer as much support and assistance as we can for people. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Menka now because that's enough talking from me. <laughs> but if you've got any questions, please do pop them in the chat if they come to you now or uh, feel free to do it at the end. OK, back to you, Menka. Thanks, Ruth. And um, just to add to that, there is a, a maximum word count, isn't there, for each yeah. criteria? Yeah. But that's just yeah. um, to give a rough idea that in terms of um, that this is it's a max, it doesn't, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to fill out the whole 200 words or 300 yeah. words. Yeah. Um, Actually, can I, Menka, before you go, can I add in one thing that I forgot to say sure. <laughs> from the website? <laughs> so on the web page at the bottom, we've also got a separate, um, an, a completely optional EDI monitoring form. Um, which we're really kind of trying to encourage people to fill out if they can, just because we obviously want to ensure that we're reaching as many people as possible with these awards. And the only way that we'll be able to tell whether or not we've done that is by a bit of monitoring. Um, so that won't be part of the um, application. It'll be separated off, but it'll just help us know whether or not we're actually reaching different people or we're just going to the, to the same old crowd, really. Um, so yeah, that'd be very helpful. Thank you. Back to you, Menka, sorry. Um, yeah, this will probably come up in the questions, but um, we, we do have like a separate judging panel as well. So it's, it's not just, um, yeah, it's not just an internal process. We've got um, external judges to help us with the assessment. Right, so um, what am I doing now? I'm going through the six criteria. Uh, do you think, Ruth, you could pull up the slides for that? As a screen share at the same time while I talk. Does that work? So we've got, um, so why Ruth's doing that, we have six criteria. Awesome, thanks Ruth. So we have these six criteria and in the submission form that Ruth just showed us, you're invited to share a few paragraphs about how your innovation meets each one. So the first one is solving a real problem. So that goes back to necessity like why is this innovation really needed? Um, we are looking for two things here. One is clarity on who you're seeking to serve. And two is clarity on why you believe that existing offerings are not a great solution for that group of people. So um, just to add to that, the problem that you're dealing with can be quite niche. It doesn't have to be a large scale issue, but it must be a real clear and tangible need that is being met. And the image here is um, uh, called the double diamond. It's, uh, it's kind of a, a design and innovation process. The first diamond is about expanding out into the bigger picture, exploring, and then honing into that one clearly defined problem that you want to solve. And then the second diamond there is going through a similar divergence and convergence to come to a specific clearly defined solution. So yeah, just to say that, at the point of application, we'd like you to be able to articulate the problem very clearly. And then uh, moving on to the second criteria, the uh, this is about creativity and risk taking. So having told us why what's already out there isn't right for the problem you're wanting to solve, we're now asking what makes your offering different from what already exists? What's the creative spark that sets your approach apart? And maybe it's what you're teaching people or how you're teaching them. And this is really the whole point of the awards to recognize, celebrate and champion your creativity that's making a difference. And this image here is um, the classic, well, it's, well, there's many, but this one is called the 4P model of innovation. And if we describe mindfulness training as a product, it's probably not the right word for it, more of a service or an offering, but as a shorthand, if you call it a product, the four Ps are changing the product itself uh, changing the position of the product in terms of the context it's used in. That's the second one. Uh, the third one is changing the process for creating or for delivering the product. And the fourth one is uh, changing the paradigm 
which is challenging the underlying model that governs the current approaches to mindfulness training. So it could be anywhere in this sphere, um, your, your innovation. And um, this diagram is from the field book if you want to look at it in more detail. So the third criteria we're looking at is diversity, inclusion and accessibility. There are a lot of people that don't currently practice mindfulness because of some barrier. And this could be financial, cultural, language or something else that makes people think that mindfulness isn't for them. And there are countless examples of this. It could be top corporate execs thinking that mindfulness is just another productivity hack and therefore not getting access to the deeper practices and benefits. Or it could be people of color thinking that mindfulness teaching as a profession is biased and segregated and perhaps not a field that they can be successful in. You know, it could, could be anything. But for the award submission, we want to know how you're trying to include people into the mindfulness world and which barriers you're helping to overcome in order to do so. The image in here is um, from the fieldbook again. It refers to how important it is to understand your target you know, client or user or beneficiary, your audience. What are their needs and their values, their context, their behavioral norms? We need to know these things in order to meet people where they're at and make our offerings to them as accessible as possible. So that's uh, the third criteria. The fourth one is about testing and adapting as you go along. So to state an obvious but rather harsh truth, any intervention that we make in other people's lives, no matter how good the intention, has the potential to harm people or let them down in different ways. If you're putting something new out there into the world, you know, you'd wanna know, we want to know, where does your confidence come from? We're expecting quite a wide range of responses to this question because every project will be at a different stage of development. And the standard of evidence that's sufficient to give you and others confidence will depend on which stage you're at. So for example, it could be your personal experience and training and expertise that gives you that confidence. It could be your team, your supporters, your advisors and supervisors. It could be feedback from your target audience. And maybe with this feedback, you've already been through a couple of rounds of iterating your offering. Or it could be that you've gone ahead and set up a collaboration with scientific researchers might be at very early stages, but it means that the intention is there from the outset to build and test things um, as you go along, building up the evidence base. And in the field book, there is a whole section dedicated to this topic called, does it work? Which is all about testing and adapting. Maybe reading through that might give you some examples of things that you're actually already doing, or it might give you some ideas for things you want to do next on your journey, both of which we'd love to hear about. The image um, here is about systems thinking, and I'm sure it's one that all innovators will intuitively be able to relate to. Things are always a lot more complicated than they seem. And if you're trying to work out the cause of what makes something work, there will be many factors that are interconnected. And these relationships need to be understood to know that you're building on a solid foundation. Uh, collaboration and, and the next criteria is collaboration and learning from others. So that's... Uh, sort of self-explanatory, but just to say a few words, I mean, we want to know how your innovation interacts with others in and beyond the mindfulness field. Like who are you inspired by? Who are you learning from? Equally, how are you sharing your work and knowledge with others? Which communities are you an active part of? What partnerships are you developing? This is really an opportunity to share how your work is more than just a sum of its parts. You tell us about the ripple effect, tell us about the intangible value that is hard to quantify. And then finally, uh, the sustainability over time. So money, business models, and longer term impact. I mean, there are a lot of great pop-up ideas which are valuable and amazing most of the time, but this award is for recognizing innovations that are making a, a difference over the longer term. So for that, as you know, we all know, there has to be a game plan like in terms of how you're securing finance, what obstacles you think you might face, what ideas you have for overcoming those, and how you hope to make a difference in years to come. And if you do intend to grow in size or replicate or franchise, which of course you don't have to because small is also beautiful, then if you are going to go that way, then how do you intend to achieve the scale without compromising the integrity of the core idea? And the image in, on this slide is about uh, a case study from the field book again. Uh, it's a corporate mindfulness training, a train the trainer model 
called Champion Training, which was scaled over a few years within a bank. But you know, they had this idea from the, from the beginning. Like, uh, so that was, was interesting about that case study. And that is all of the six criteria. So yeah, any questions, just um, pop them in the chat box or you can ask at the end. Thank you very much, Menka. I think I'm right in saying that's, that's all from us <laughs> in terms of talking. Um, so we're going to open it out for questions now. Opportunity. First so of all, it's very nice just to be here and see so many faces. And it would be just nice to share the money right now and then embark on the journey together. <laughs> it feels like such a lovely um, uh, learning opportunity. So is that the, are those six questions, that's the only criteria? Yeah. yeah. And I'm yeah. just wondering what I'm, 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 I like to think ahead. So what what does the award <laughs> ceremony look like? Would it actually be actually meeting everyone meets face to face or would it be online? Yeah, we're hoping that it'll be face to face, um, but we're sort of at the early stages of exploring that at the moment, William, um, partly because we didn't want to kind of do lots of premature exploration before we knew what COVID was going to be doing. Um, but now it looks as though face to face should be uh, possible. And that's that's what we'd hope to do. It might not be in London, um, and if it's not in London, we'll make sure we pay expenses for people to get there, uh, for winners to get there. But we kind of thought we want to try and make sure it's not necessarily London centric, uh, like a lot of these things are. Um, so yeah. Well, I can invite you all to West Sussex. You know where I am. It's quite nice. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> okay. So I. Oh, yep. Yeah. Imani, go for it. Hi there. The Greetings, everyone. Hi. It's wonderful to be here on this space. I'm Imani. Um, I'm, I work and align myself with MNPC. Um, I also have my own company, um, KMT Rising, where I deliver mindfulness packages to marginalized gurus. My question was um, <clears throat> how will you be working to ensure that the, the scoring criteria? to decide upon the, the five is um, objective and not subjective. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Imani. That's a really good question. So we're planning on basically going through an in initial SIFT process. Um, so anonymizing to start with. So we'll have somebody who's not involved in the SIFT taking names out of the applications so that we're not kind of subjectively um, affected by knowing who it is um, as much as that's possible. Um, so by the time they come to the initial SIFT, they'll be anonymized. Um, and after that, there are scoring, there are going to be scoring criteria against scoring against those six criteria um, to take it through to the to the um, judges. So there'll be a shortlist that then goes to the judges where they also score against those criteria. And it'll be kind of average scores um, with a, with a sort of credibility check to, you know, check those first questions so that it is. UK based that it is mindfulness related because um, they're the sort of the, the deal breakers really that sit across the applications. But then after that, it'll be kind of um, judged on the scoring matrix. Menka, do you want to say anything more about that? Because you're kind of more involved with the, with the judging side of things as well. Yeah, so um, I mean, to an extent, uh, there will be some subjectivity because everything always is subjective. Um, but um, we've tried to balance out the judging panel. And actually there was a question um, in the chat box about who those people are. Um, so uh, I, we can we could share them, right, Ruth? Or, um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, they are um, Richard, Richard Burnett, who is the, um, one of the founders of Mindfulness in Schools, um, Vidyamala, um, Birch, who is the founder of Breathworks. There's um, Rohan Gunatilak, who um, was the founder of Buddhify and um, uh, Mindfulness Everywhere. And he's the host of um, the Meditative Story podcast. And Kathy May, who I'm um, not um, uh, too familiar with yet, but um, Ruth, can you say something about her? Yeah, so Kathy May Carls is um, founding director of Clear Mind Institute. Um, and she's, her background is mainly in kind of, she trained mainly in Massachusetts. Um, and she has a real interest in racial justice, gen gender justice, social action. So yeah, she's on the judging panel to me. And you, Menka, 
I yes. stretch your hand out as well. <laughs> <laughs> and and so what um, I think what um, just the reason I bring this up in response to your question is is just to say that uh, as far as possible the applications will be anonymized, and then uh, we have purposefully chosen um, a, a group uh, that is quite diverse. So um, hopefully you know some of those subjective biases will get balanced out. And um, yeah, quite a few of them were involved with the field work. Um, they have been innovators themselves or are innovators themselves, but they come to the subject from yeah, different backgrounds. So hopefully that will help. Thank you. Um, I've got quite a number of questions. Sorry. <laughs> and I'm sure some of them That's are, okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe a bit obvious perhaps, but anyway, um, I'll bite the bullet and just um, and see what uh, what what sort of responses um, I get back. What the first one is: um, Can we submit more than one idea, one innovation? Because, for example, I mean, I can think of at least three myself that that are are quite reasonable, <laughs> quite reasonable innovation. So, would that be seen as sort of double dipping? or not. Um, the second question is that if, for example, um, I have witnessed or been a part of um, a mindfulness program that has been carried out elsewhere, right? So it's not an original idea. Uh, for example, there's a fantastic program that was piloted in Israel for refugees. And so it's all about trauma-inspired mindfulness. And I mean, so if for, if, for example, you know, looking at, you know, if I'm looking at what is available here in the UK for refugees and feeling that, you know, wouldn't it be wonderful to replicate what you know, Professor Bernstein is doing in Israel, for example, um, with a few tweaks, because obviously we have a different sort of refugee caseload in the UK than than Israel currently has. So, um, so that is it. If it's if it's you know, obviously you give credit to the to the original um, person who has come up with this idea, um, but sort of tweaking it. Um, the third question is, um, would we have to prove, as you said, the sustainability, would we have to have a project that's already been through the initial hoops? And I'm thinking in particular about the funding issues, because um, it's one thing to have ideas and um, sort of aspirational, um, innovative, uh, wonderful ideas about how we're going to help spread um, mindfulness and you know benefit people from this but you know most of the time there's that thorny issue and I'm th I think all my colleagues have have come across this already the issue of funding whether it's from the public whether it's from private or whether it's institutional um, it is you know fundraising has been for me at least at least something that's quite difficult to to get a handle on um, and did I have another one for you? Um, yeah, I think that was it. <laughs> I might think of another hey. one. <laughs> Thanks, Elizabeth. That's it for now. Okay. <laughs> Shall I share something, Ruth? Yeah, go yeah. for it then. I think we're looking through the awards to celebrate some achievement. So I think we're looking for projects that are more than just an idea so that someone who's actually made the start and been through a process of reflection and evaluation, however informal, so that you have some sense of this would be worth expanding on, this would be worth developing further. So I, I think in a way that might answer the first bit that if you've got three, four more ideas, it would be really interested in something that you've tested. And, and I think part of the message is that um, not quite right, but sort of fail fast. Is, is there some way that people could take an idea, try it, and then reflect carefully? And it's really the, that, that kind of stage that we're looking at, rather than just idea. 
so, and so that we're encouraging people to go through this careful process of reflection, innovation, reflection, innovation, so that we can derive them the, the greatest benefit from what we're doing. And we're seeing that the awards then would celebrate that and would wave a flag for other people to say, well, that started from a really small idea. Maybe I could try something. So we're hoping that you're going to be inspiring others as well as helping the people that you're helping. Mm. If I may respond to that just quickly and say that um, in a way, you know, your response begs the question of the financing aspect as well, the funding. Because if you have an idea, but you haven't been able to really implement it because of lack of funding. Um, you know, I love Vidya Mala Birch's story of how she started in a, in a, in a bed sit um, 20 years ago. Um, with a very small grant and you know now she has a global business 20 years down the line but it was very difficult even for her you know with this wonderful idea of uh, uh, um, mindfulness for chronic pain and health and so on but anyway so I think it's almost you know we might get into a sort of circular argument that you know I haven't been able to test this because I don't have the funding and or I've only been able to test it in a very limited way be again, because of the funding, so just, just, to, just, <laughs> just to put it out there that it can be. Yeah, 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 definitely hear that, Elizabeth. And I think yeah. funding is just a huge issue for any kind of projects that are trying to get off the ground. Um, I think that you know the, there are grants and funding available, not as much as we would like, <laughs> but that's as Vince said, that's not really what these awards are about. So these awards aren't a grant to kind of kickstart and get an idea off the ground. They're a celebration, really, of those, uh, those ideas that have got off the ground. And we hope that by doing that and kind of showcasing and highlighting, that may encourage more funders to say, you know, okay, well, look what's happened here. This has really grown, grown into something. So we should be, you know, putting more money and resources into that. Um, but that's not what these particular awards are, are kind of doing, if that makes sense. So it's a really good question, because yeah, it does distinguish between the two. So thank you. And at the same time, it's not really aimed at the most developed awards either. It is not really aimed at the big teaching organisations. Mm. It's probably at the graduates of teaching organisations, people who have learnt and then want to bring what they've learnt to specific client groups. So not at the very beginning, but it doesn't have to be that far along the road, but, but some sense of what you want to do next, having done something. Sure. Yeah, Thank you. Thanks. that's really well said, Finn. And, and um, I think at that stage of a project, um, an award like this could hopefully help, you know, um, because it's, 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 it's um, not insignificant, but it's a small amount of, of funding. And it's, it's more to, as, as um, Ruth keeps saying, to celebrate, to recognize, to honor, and um, to champion and to and the point of doing a short film in addition is because at this stage of, of a project that it, a lot of it is about you know uh, articulating and codifying what it is about your idea and your work so far that has been has been successful and and therefore um, to help that project to grow but also to inspire others and Absolutely. inspire the wider ecosystem in terms of funding as well to up its game so yeah, really good question. Um, just to come back to your really specific thing about applying more than once. I think we haven't actually discussed that, but I think that should be fine in theory. There's no reason why um, if you have two separate initiatives that you've been working on, you couldn't put in two separate applications. Um, and then the other question about the trauma-inspired mindfulness and the idea of, of replicating but adapting it in the UK context. Um, again, I, I see that as an innovation. So. Um, yeah, you're, you're taking something that worked in one context and and seeing how you can make it work here. But going back to Vin's point, it's also um, for the for this specific award, we're looking for uh, some traction, some progress, some testing to have been done. Thanks, Menka. Thank you, Elizabeth. Nikki, I go to you. Um, hi there. Hi. Um, yeah, I feel I'm really really interested in what you're doing and from my own training way back in mindfulness uh, when I first trained you know I did feel that what I was offering personally I wanted to offer there wasn't much space within 
what was kind of currently being done. So I've been a bit more peripheral from the mindfulness, more mainstream mindfulness community, which is I, I integrate art therapy and mindfulness, which I have been doing for the last 10 years. Um, but within some of the mindfulness trainings, I've found myself, you know, it's still peripheral to, in terms of, you know, programs like MBSSR, MBCT, and what I do is, is different from that. But it's been evolving for the last 10 years what I do does equally prioritize both therapy um, art therapy and also mindfulness I don't know I just was just curious I don't want to take much time and you know from other people but if I'm something sorry. like that patient or perhaps not perhaps it's more you know you've got other programs in mind of uh, you know types of things in mind so just just a quick question about that I think that's great Nikki I think that's exactly the type of thing that someone's absorbed mindfulness staying true to the principles of mindfulness but then this was what Menke was talking about in the criteria, just reaching out, collaborating across different fields, which is something that the big training organisations can't do because they have to stick to the knitting, you know? But then how, how can we use it in ways that are going to benefit even more people? Mm. So you're at the right place, I think. Okay, because uh, basically the, the, you know, I did some training with a well, very well-known provider and I was sort of, what you said earlier about you know does this have the evidence base yet no doesn't have the evidence base yet but then where do you start you have to start somewhere pre-evidence base so I felt that I, I found other people to support the work and I've had lots of people supporting and collaborating that development but it didn't start with an evidence base and like I think Elizabeth was referring to you do need funding to do randomized control trials etc so it does slightly relate to that point that you know you don't start with an evidence base but thank you thanks for um you know your response thank you maybe maybe you would say we're looking for proof of concept or mm -hmm. some sense that it's worth pursuing mm -hmm. and it may well be that if somebody wins the award or even just through the exposure of the award or of, of being participating then that would attract funding to go for, you know, uh, a more in-depth level of research. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. Um, Jutta, I'm going to come to you, but can I just go for William's question in the, in the chat first? Because I don't want to think I've ignored that. Because I did see. So this is going back to the scoring, and the question was, oh no, sorry, it was Tim. It was, are all the criteria considered to be of equal value? Um, and the answer is yes. So all the criteria are sort of going to be equally weighted. There's no weighting given to one particular criteria over another. Um, so those six criteria are sort of equal weighting because we, we think they're all very important. Um, so yeah, that, that answers that question, hopefully. Great. Okay. Um, I think you're on mute, Yetta. Uh, if you just, yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much. You can hear me okay, Ruth? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Fab. Thank you. Super cool. Um, thanks so much. Um, really excited about this um, I have a quick question Ruth um, I guess as you know I'm a member of the you know, research scientific community and so I'm not really interested in you know getting funding uh, to do RCTs but are we open to do to evaluate innovations that build community by pairing up from you know from academia from science uh, into community and, and, and tapping into the mindfulness community network because I haven't heard you mention you know scientific research being potentially rolled out further into communities because that's one of my challenges yeah i mean i think i i'm speaking for menka and Vimba, i think we'd love that you know if this kind of leads to more collaborations then yeah. that's what the, that's what this is about you know <laughs> that's one of the key criteria and yeah one of the things that we're hoping will kind of come from these awards is you know making connections between people um yeah and, and getting some of that that research help where it's needed so yeah definitely Cool. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> okay, can I go see um, Alan next and then Barbara, please? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Sorry, I'm just going to get off a train. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> initiative. Um, just a quick question. I, uh, I'm going to stop you because you're breaking. Alan, you've sorry. broken up. I'm sorry. So we've missed your question. Can you hear me? But I think uh, we can now. Is it the question that you actually asked in the chat? Yeah. Yeah. OK, so um, your question was just for everybody else's benefit. Um, the innovations was started in Northern Ireland, being delivered to social workers and students in Northern Ireland. And you've since, since switched jobs from Queen's University Belfast to Trinity Co College Dublin. 
can you still apply? So it's kind of a geography based question. Um, I think with all the all of these questions, it's worth saying that um, the final call will be with the judges, which sounds like a bit of a cop out, but I don't want to say something here where I get overruled by the external judging panel. Um, but I think if it's something like a real technicality, I don't think people are going to go out of their way for you not to be able to apply, if that makes sense. So if you know, it's the fact that you've moved postcode since developing an innovation, um, I don't think that should be something that stops you from thinking about applying. Um, Menka and Vin, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, that, that, that I say without prejudging that I think um, <laughs> we're in the process of innovating something here <laughs> and uh, I, I think there are questions that we want to have dreamt of but we will give them careful consideration yeah yeah okay Menko have you got anything to add or are you happy for me to move on okay great Barbara can I come to you Hi, thank you so much. Um, it is a great pleasure to be here and to see familiar faces again and some colleagues. My question is also related to research and I'm thinking about, um, because if we consider an innovation, I wonder whether you are expecting actually like training and intervention work versus more theoretical ideas that could be, you know, um, spread through research. Um, I'm thinking more about, for example, research outcomes such as publications, I think that's another way of impacting uh, the communities, but also the wider um, spectrum of research in relation to mindfulness and mindfulness interventions as a whole. So my question is whether there's gonna be a disadvantage, for example, if this innovation is framed in terms of this theoretical proposal or paradigm that not necessarily will meet um, for example, this testing process at that very short or um, medium term um, period. Um, just to clarify, Barbara, are you saying that um, you're a researcher or that you work yes. in the research community? Right. Yes. And <laughs> would you be eligible to apply if you're putting forward something to do with the way that research is done? And in, in innovation in terms of how research is done in the mindfulness space? It is. Um, so th there are different ways because I also collaborate with an organization. So there are some ideas coming from my own research um, that I like to put out and, you know, to kind of um, put it out to communicate with other people that I know that are working on the field in terms of di diversity and inclusion. But at the same time, I think there are two um, areas for impacting with these ideas. And that's my question, um, whether this is going to be considered or it has to be actual practical work in terms of teaching and, and delivering an intervention, if that makes yeah. sense. No, I think, I think um, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Vin, Ruth, but I, I was thinking that we would be um, looking for as many diverse applications or submissions as possible in terms of not just um, uh, changes in the way that mindfulness training is delivered, mm. but also, you know, the, the wider ecosystem of, um, of services that, that enable that, but also the um, mm. relationships that enable that. So research would be a, a, a really important part of that. So if there's, if there's something new in the way that that can happen, then that's really exciting to hear about that. Um, but just to flag again, what um, we were talking about earlier in terms of, um, you know, you were saying that it might not be possible to, to have uh, test it in a conventional way. So it, it, if, if it's something that you've already done and, and you would have a, some feedback on whether it's helped and whether it's been effective. Mm -hmm. So it has to be at the kind of that stage. So um, yeah, hopefully we'll be doing the awards again next year as well. So <laughs> maybe sure. it gives you a window to, to try it out and get feedback and, and test it because that, that's mm -hmm. going to be um, an important part of the submission. Mm. Okay, thank you. And ho hopefully, just to add to that, when people sort of read through the application form, there are lots of sort of question prompts in there to think about. So when we're talking about testing, we're not talking about, you know, having done a full RCT, <laughs> because we recognise that's quite a massive ask, um, and that that does require a lot of funding and research. Um, so, you know, it might be that you've had feedback from the group that you've run it with, or the, so it's, it's we're talking about test during, testing in a sort of wider sense of the word. That's right, Menka, isn't it? Just, just so we're not kind of making people think that this has to be some sort of, you know, 
rigorous RCT process that you've gone through. Exactly. Innovation. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's one of the main barriers to entry in terms of um, innovation in the space is then um, it is it is very um, there, there are uh, there is a lot of research and a lot of the innovations are research driven as well. But um, there are other ways uh, of, of developing ideas and uh, other ways of being creative. And so, um, yeah, an RCT doesn't have to be the starting point. So it's, it's um, yeah. In fact, in the field book, there is something called the evidence hierarchy, which might be interesting to a lot of you, which um, is kind of like a pyramid. And I'll show it to you. It's like this pyramid. And RCTs are right up here at the top. And there's all of this world of testing and evaluation and getting feedback and building up confidence that this works um, before getting to that stage. So. Yeah. Thanks, Benka. And that links really nicely to what I was going to say next, which is that um, there are the, a lot of amazing resources within the field book. So um, if you have sort of questions about, you know, what do you actually mean by testing? Um, going to the field book to kind of see what that says and it's written in a really kind of friendly accessible way um, should hopefully be a good good starting place um, we're also going to try and put FAQs on the web page that we showed you so that if people are kind of asking us things that are coming up again and again we can kind of put them on, up there so that people people know the answer um, if you do have questions please email them through to that email address that we've got at the bottom but just bear in mind that it's me that's checking it so i won't not be that <laughs> i've got quite a few email addresses that i check so it won't be checked on a um hour by hour basis but i will make sure that i get back to you and um unless you say otherwise i'll share the q a with everybody else on the kind of living document that we keep up to date on the web page just because i'm sure if one person asks it that means somebody else will be thinking it as well um so yeah we'll be trying to do that as much as possible. Um, but unless anybody has any further questions, um, we're at half five, so I don't want to sort of keep people, but thank you so much for coming and, and sharing your questions with us. Um, and yeah, we're just really excited. We're really excited to share this with you. Um, we know that it's going to be you know, an evolving process, um, but yeah, hope that you've been inspired to apply, take a look at the application form, um, and really looking forward to seeing what comes through. Um, then, Menka, do you have any final thoughts to add? I'd just like to take it back to really first principles of innovation is saying, this is how things are being done now. I've got an idea of how it could be done better or differently. Yeah. And I'm, I'm in a good position, maybe because I am sort of working in quite a small organisation or as an individual to actually do that, but then do it using the sound principles that the, the field book outlined so well. But really just encouraging people to try different things because otherwise not everyone has found an approach to mindfulness that resonates with them for whatever reason they're put off by it. So if we could share the benefits of mindfulness that we all know about by being more creative, that's what I really want to encourage. And learn from each other and make connections. Mm. Yeah, you hear. <laughs> Thank you, Vin. Um, and yeah, just um, from my side, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing the submissions. I know that there's uh, a lot of people working, um, you know, behind the scenes in the peripheries or um, yeah, in, in between silos and, and um, it would be great to hear from them and to be able to, to celebrate more of the good work that's happening. And uh, you know, going back again to one of the first principles, it, when, when you ask a question like, why is it that people want to innovate? And if, just connecting with that is just so inspiring for me because, uh, because yeah, it's, it's to help and to, to support and to uplift and to, um, to add to the positive energy of the world. So like with the people that are working in this space are always uh, such a delight to, to meet with and collaborate with. So yeah, looking forward to, to uh, getting to know more of you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. And as I said, we'll, we'll share this on the webpage. <laughs> Take care. Have a good evening.
Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. All the best. Bye. 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 Bye.